नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू सांसद टीवी लाइव ब्रॉडकास्ट एट 9 पीएम दिस इज द न्यूज विद मी भावना नैयर लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द टॉप हेडलाइंस दिस मंडे इवनिंग प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी अनवील्स नेशनल एमएलएम ऑन टॉप ऑफ न्यू पार्लियामेंट बिल्डिंग कांग्रेचुलेट्स कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्कर्स ऑन कंप्लीटिंग अ हिस्टोरिकल टास्क रिलीव फॉर उद्धव फैक्शन फ्रॉम सुप्रीम कोर्ट महाराष्ट्र स्पीकर रिस्ट्रेन फ्रॉम डिसक्वालिफाइंग एमएलएस AIA DMK in Tamil Nadu expels O Paneer Selvam from party's primary membership and treasurer post Palani Swami appointed interim general secretary Fugitive businessman Vijay Malya sentenced to 4 months in jail in contempt case faces charges of defrauding banks of 9000 crore rupees Rain situation worsens in Telangana Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh flood like situation in many parts of Gujarat Prime Minister says shows all help to the states. Let us now quickly look at some more important stories of the day in our flash segment. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh praises role of artificial intelligence but asserts that strengthening itself in the sector does not mean India wants to rule the world. Two terrorists, including Jaisi Muhammad's Kesar Cocaine, killed in Avantipura in South Kashmir's Pulwama district. U.S. made arms recovered. Parmeswaran Iyer takes charge of CEO of Niti Aayog. 1981 batch IAS officer of Uttar Pradesh cadre, Iyer has extensive experience in both public and private sectors. Mines Minister Prahlad Joshi says state governments will get incentives for successful auctioning of mines and identification of potential mineral blocks. Pradhan Mantri National Apprenticeship Mela held at over 200 locations. One day event featured 36 sectors, 1000 companies and 500 distinct trades. India will provide all possible help to Sri Lanka to tide over current economic crisis says Foreign Minister Dr S J Shankar asserts that both India and Sri Lanka share warm bilateral relations Telangana government declares 3 day holiday for all educational institutions from July 11th to 13th after heavy rains in the state Oldest surviving Royal Bengal Tiger Raja dies in Alipur Dwar West Bengal. He was aged 25 years old and 10 months. Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party and ally Kumeto win parliamentary elections held on Sunday. Coalition garners 146 seats in 248 member house. And limited fuel and gas supplies resume in Sri Lanka after a weekend of anti-government protest over economic crisis, long queues at fuel stations in capital Colombo. And now the lead story of the day. Prime Minister Narendra Modi unveiled the national emblem on the roof of the new parliament building on Monday. The Prime Minister called it a milestone ahead of the scheduled opening of the new parliament building later this year in the time for the winter session. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla, Deputy Chairman of Rajya Sabha Hari Vansh and Urban Development Minister Hardeep Puri were also present on the occasion. Prime Minister Modi also interacted with the workers involved in the building of the new parliament. He said the nation will always remember their contribution. Marat bana rahe hain ki itihas bana rahe hain. Sabko maro hai. Lok Sabha ka mantri bana rahe hain. Ha. आपको पता है सबको तो काम करने के लिए उसमें क्या फर्क मकान बनाते हैं और ये बनाते हैं घर तो काम करते समय क्या फर्क होता है Made of bronze, the emblem weighs 9,500 kilos and is 6.5 meters in height. The national emblem is placed at the top of the central foyer of the new parliament building. A steel structure weighing 6500 kilos supports the emblem. The concept sketch of the national emblem cast went through eight stages of preparation. They include stages from clay modeling, computer graphics to bronze casting and polishing. 
Moving on to our next story, the Supreme Court has directed the newly elected Maharashtra Speaker not to take any decision on the request to disqualify MLAs of the Shiv Sena faction, led by Uddhav Thakre. The bench took note of a representation filed by senior advocate Kapil Sibbal. It said several petitions filed by the Uddhav Thakre faction are yet to be heard. The Uddhav faction has challenged the validity of the proceedings of the Maharashtra Assembly held on July 3rd and 4th, which elected the new speaker and Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde proved his majority. A general council meeting of the AIA DMK expelled Opanir Selvam from the primary membership of the party and the post of treasurer. It also endorsed Palani Swami as interim general secretary while authorizing him to run the organization. Party leader N. R. Vishwanathan moved the resolution to expel O. Paneer Selvam and his supporters. Paneer Selvam was accused of acting against the interest of the party. Paneer Selvam has said that he will seek legal action against Palani Swami, who he said has no right to expel him from the party. Tamil Nadu officials sealed the party headquarters after supporters of the Palani Swami and Pani Selvam indulged in a violence inside and outside the party office. The Congress filed petitions with Goa Assembly Speaker Ramesh Tawadkar seeking disqualification of its MLAs Michael Lobo and Digambar Kamath. Five Goa Congress MLAs went in communicado on Sunday triggering concerns of possible defection for the party. They, however, attended the assembly proceedings on the first day of the monsoon session on, sun on Monday. Congress Goa in charge Dinesh Gundu Rao had alleged that five MLAs were plotting with the BJP to split the party. Goa Chief Minister Pramod Savant called the allegations baseless. The Congress subsequently removed Lobo from the post of leader of opposition in 40-member state assembly. हमें हमें किसी की कोई जरूरत नहीं है हमारा स्टेबल गवर्नमेंट है 25 एमएलए का हमें सपोर्ट है या दैट्स ऑल एंड नाउ न्यूज़ अबाउट मॉनसून्स हेवी रेन्स कंटिन्यू इन सेवरल पार्ट्स ऑफ गुजरात द आईएमडी हैज फोरकास्ट हेवी टू वेरी हेवी रेनफॉल इन द नेक्स्ट 5 डेज इन साउथ गुजरात अ फ्लड लाइक सिचुएशन प्रिवेल्स इन लो लाइंग एरियाज ऑफ साउथ एंड सेंट्रल गुजरात इंक्लूडिंग अहमदाबाद थाउजेंड्स हैव बीन शिफ्टेड टू सेफर प्लेसेस फ्रॉम दीस डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स Schools and colleges are shut in many parts of the state. Narmada and Chota Udaipur districts in central Gujarat and Surat, Tapi and Valsad in south Gujarat are badly affected. Due to flash floods, the bridge connecting Panchol and Kumbhia villages in Tapi district has been washed away. Prime Minister Narendra Modi called up Gujarat Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel to assess the situation. He has assured Patel of all possible help from the center. And now in Madhya Pradesh, many districts, including state capital Bhopal, had heavy rain since Sunday night. Many areas are facing water logging. The weather department has issued an orange alert in many parts of the state. There is a possibility of heavy to very heavy rainfall in Bhopal division. In Maharashtra now, heavy rains caused water logging Mumbai and adjoining areas. Moderate rain is forecast in the next 24 hours. There is also possibility of heavy rain at some places. In Nashik district, water level of several rivers rose as heavy rains continued. Several temples near the Godavari River have been submerged. People in villages living along the banks of Godavari and other rivers have been put on alert. And now news from Amarnath Yatra. Amarnath Yatra resumed after being suspended for almost a day due to bad weather. The 12th batch of 4,026 pilgrims left for Jammu for the Amarnath cave situated at an altitude of 3,880 meters in South Kashmir. The Yatra from Jammu was suspended after a cloud burst near the cave on July 8. Pilgrims were once again sent amidst tight security after the improvement in the weather. The army constructed a temporary staircase outside the holy cave after a landslide damaged the road leading to the cave temple. So far, 1,13,000 pilgrims have visited the holy cave. On Monday, Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha visited the Nunwan base camp in Pehelgam and took stock of the arrangements for the Yatra. 
The Supreme Court sentenced fugitive liquor baron Vijay Malya to four months in jail. The top court also imposed a fine of Rs 2,000 in a 2017 contempt case. Malia was convicted of contempt in 2017 for transferring 40 million US dollars to his children in violation of court orders. In 2020, the Apex Court dismissed Malia's petition seeking review of the May 2017 verdict. Malia is accused of bank loan default of over rupees 9,000 crore involving his defunct Kingfisher Airlines. And about today's day, India will overtake China as the world's most populous country next year, according to the UN. The UN's World Population Prospect 2022 said global population is projected to touch 8 billion on November 15, 2023. It added that global population is growing at its lowest pace since 1950 and is expected to drop below 1%. The latest UN projection suggests that the world's population could grow to around 8.5 billion in 2030 and to 9.7 billion in 2050. And now news from across the nation. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Monday inaugurated the first seminar and exhibition on artificial intelligence in Delhi. He said many DRDO Academy Centres of Excellence have been set up across the country with special focus on artificial intelligence. Supreme Court has said that the central government is bound to fulfil its promise to Portugal in case of gangster Abu Salim. According to the commitment, the government will release Salim after he completes 25 years jail sentence in the 1993 Mumbai blast case. Moving on, the fourth phase of the sea trials for indigenous aircraft carrier Vikrant have been successfully completed. Integrated trials of the equipment and systems on board were undertaken in this exercise. The Defence Ministry said the ship's delivery is being targeted by the end of this month. The ship is expected to be commissioned in August this year to commemorate Azadi Kamrat Mohotsar. And India has administered over 198 crore 88 lakh vaccine doses on a nationwide vaccination drive, the health ministry said on Monday. Recovery rate is currently 98.50%. 16,678 fresh COVID cases and 26 deaths have been recorded in the last 24 hours. And now let us look at some stories from the world of business and economy. Beginning with, the RBI has set up a mechanism to settle international trade in rupees. Authorized banks will need the RBI's approval to enable the system. The RBI said the move will facilitate trade settlement in rupees while also allowing India to bypass orders that prevent the use of global currency like the US dollar for trade with some countries like Russia. And heavy rains in Assam and North Bengal have affected tea plantations that account for nearly 81% tea produced in the country. The Tea Association of India says crop production in Barak Valley declined by 16% in June compared to the same period last year, while the Duars region of West Bengal, the fall was 21%. Alan Musk's withdrawal from the proposed takeover of Twitter led to a sharp 6% drop in the company's shares. Musk has alleged that Twitter is not providing enough information about fake accounts. Twitter CEO Parag Agarwal is reported to be preparing for a legal battle to enforce the sale. The BSE Sensex dropped 0.16% while the NAC Nifty dropped 0.03% on a day the rupee hit a record low of 79.44 against the dollar. Bharti Airtel and TCS were among prominent losers with stocks sliding more than 5%. In contrast, Tata Steel, Mahindra & Mahindra, Asian Paints and Reliance Industries registered gains up to 3%. And now from markets across the world saw so mixed sentiment as stocks in Japan surged after the ruling Liberal Democratic Party's landslide victory in parliamentary elections. The euro hit a 20-year low against the US dollar. Concerns over the shutdown of a gas pipeline from Russia to Germany saw the DAX index drop 1%, while Hong Kong, Shanghai and South Korea also suffered losses up to 3%.
slipping into a short break here on the other side. Protesters stay put in presidential residence as opposition party says it is ready to lead next government. All this and much more on this the news. Stay tuned to Sansa TV. The glorious journey of India's 75 years of independence, protection of rights, ensuring equality, to empower, to deliver justice. Laws that have defined India and its people. Laws that everyone should know. Watch 75 years. Laws that shaped India. With me, Heman Batra, only on Sansat TV. Welcome back. After the break, you're watching the news in time now for all the big developments from the Russia-Ukraine war front. Death toll in Russian missile attack on Chesev Yar in Donetsk region has climbed to 18. Emergency workers continue to search for survivors in the ruins of three buildings that were hit late on Saturday night. At least six people have been rescued from the rubble so far. Cranes and excavators have been working alongside rescue teams to clear away the ruins of one building. Ukrainian President Zelensky has warned that all those responsible for strikes against civilians in the country would be punished. Zelensky also said that there has been no let-up in Russian attacks on his country with 34 air raids conducted in the 24 hours since Saturday night, including the attack on the Chasavya. Zelensky's chief of staff has called the attack on the town of Chesev Yar a terrorist attack by a terrorist country. In a Twitter message, Andriy Yemek reiterated the demand to declare Russia as a state of sponsor of terrorism. Zelensky has announced to reshuffle his cabinet in a bid to tackle corruption and secure global confidence for post-war planning. The announcement comes right after he dismissed the country's ambassadors to the Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, Norway and India. Ukrainian army has said that Russia was preparing to intensify its combat operations in the Kramatorsk and Bukhmat in the Donetsk region. Moving on, Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a decree on Monday expanding a fast-track procedure to give Russian citizenship to all Ukrainians. Till now, the procedure applied only to the residents of self-proclaimed breakaway terrorists of the Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic in the eastern Ukraine. Between 2019 and this year, more than 7,20,000 residents of the rebel-held areas in Donetsk and Luhansk have received Russian passports. In late May, three months after Russia invaded Ukraine, the fast-track procedure was also offered to residents of the Zaporizhia and Kherson region. And time now for some other global updates. And now, a worsening situation in Sri Lanka. Leaders of the protest movement in Sri Lanka, who forced the president and prime minister out of their official residences, are determined to occupy the buildings until the two quit office. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa said he will resign on Wednesday. The announcement has paved the way for the search of political alternatives in the country. More details in this report. Thousands of protesters laying siege to President Gotabaya Rajapaksha's official residence in Colombo. People were seen in the bedrooms and splashing around in the swimming pool of the president's house. About one lakh protesters amassed outside the president's residence since Saturday, demanding Rajapaksha's resignation. In the wake of the protests, cash-starved Sri Lanka's main opposition party, SJB, said it is ready to lead the next government to bring stability in the bankrupt island nation. SJB leader Sajid Premadasa's statement came soon after Prime Minister Vikramay Singh has said the entire cabinet will resign. Opposition parties said they will form an all-party interim government. In a video statement, Prem Dasha said his party will appoint a government headed by a president and a prime minister. He warned that any attempt to oppose or sabotage it in parliament will be an act of treachery. 
Premdasa also recognized the people's protests. President Rajpaksha is yet to resign formally. He communicated that he will resign on Wednesday. However, protesters did not spare Prime Minister Vikramasinghe despite his offer to resign. They set on fire his private residence in the capital. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And more news from across the world. Prime Minister of Australia, Anthony Albanese, is determined to improve Australia's relationship with Pacific Island nations. Albanese and New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern will attend the Pacific Islands Forum on, in Fiji on July 14. Referring to China signing a security pact with the Solomon Islands earlier this year, Albanese agreed that Australia has dropped the ball when it comes to relations with Pacific Island nations. After Shanghai, Macau is dealing with fresh lockdowns following new outbreaks of the coronavirus. The gambling capital of Asia has to close down its casinos after the authorities started imposing lockdowns. Macau has 1,526 cases. The government has plans to test everyone in the city over the coming week. Foreign Secretary Liz Truss become another high-profile contestant entering the Prime Ministerial race in the United Kingdom. Her junior minister in the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, Rehman Chishti, also entered the contest to become the second Pakistani origin minister alongside UK-born former Health Secretary Sajid Javed. Their entry takes the total number of candidates to 11. Beside Rishi Sunak, another senior Indian origin candidate, considering a leadership bid is in, in UK is Home Secretary Preeti Patel. The wildfire at Yosemite National Park in California doubled in size on Sunday. Campers were asked to evacuate the park immediately. Yosemite National Park is famed for inhabiting the largest grove of giant and ancient sequoias. More than 500 mature sequoias are threatened in the famed Mariposa Grove. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists has alleged that ride-sharing service Uber lobbied political leaders to relax labor and taxi laws across the world. It charged the company with aggressively pushing into markets around the world. The non-profit network of investigative reporters and internal company text, emails, invoices and other documents reveal the extraordinary lens that the company undertook to establish itself in 30 countries. Natural gas is a major source of energy in Germany. About half of households use gas for heating, according to German Energy Department, and several large industries are fully reliant on gas. And a large share of gas still comes from Russia. But that might change. How? Here's the report. Germany's main source of Russian gas, delivered through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline, has reduced by more than half. The pipeline will be shut till 21st July for what Russia calls is routine work. But German officials are not convinced. They are concerned about a situation if Russia does not bring back the gas flow. A Ukrainian entrepreneur based in Berlin thinks her product can help. She had formed We Do Solar last year before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So what you see here, this is uh, solar site protection uh, for your balcony. And this is a set that generates uh, green energy from this, basically doorsteps of your balcony. Um, as you can see, there's quite a lot of site protections on balconies that are pretty much dead and don't do anything for us or for our environment. And I think we can definitely generate more energy from such a balcony uh, set and uh, do good for environment. A full set for a balcony costs 1,299 euro. They plug directly into the power circuit of the apartment. The company claims it will reduce a normal family's electricity bill by about 25%. I think since uh, the war has started in Ukraine, it has been a very big mission uh, to make sure that um, I reduce the reliance on the Russian gas and oil, um, not just in Germany, but in general in all the countries. In Germany, about 21% of the total energy mix that includes all types of energy in the country comes from gas. The government is already restarting some coal-fired power plants to reduce the use of gas. But if the Russian gas flow is cut entirely, then a plan for where the gas is used will be implemented by the government. Bureau Report, Sunset TV.
And from searching for energy alternatives, let us now search what's happening in the world of sports. Starting with tennis, seven times Wimbledon champion Novak Djokovic is hoping U.S. authorities change entry rules in time to allow him to compete at the U.S. Open, even though he refuses to be vaccinated against coronavirus. In cricket now, India will look at a winning start in the three-match ODI series beginning tomorrow at the Oval in London. The ODI series give another chance to Virat Kohli, who is looking to rediscover his batting form. In hockey, the Indian women's hockey team crashed out of the FIH World Cup title race after losing 0-1 to co-host Spain. Indian defence let in a goal just three minutes from the final hooter to exit from the knockout rounds. In shooting, Arjun Babuta won the men's 10-metre air rifle event to clinch the country's maiden gold medal at the ongoing ISSF World Cup. Arjun humbled Tokyo Olympic silver medalist Lukas Kazeski 79 in the gold medal clash. On to Formula 1, Ferrari's Charles Lukia held off world's champion Max Verstappen to win Austrian Grand Prix on Sunday and reboot his world championship challenge. Lewis Hamilton took third. And before we wrap, let's take a look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Modi unveils national emblem on top of the new parliament building, congratulates construction workers on completing a historical task. Relief for Uddhav faction from Supreme Court, Maharashtra Speaker restrained from disqualifying MLAs. AIA DMK in Tamil Nadu expels Open Eve Selvam from party's primary membership and treasurer post. Palani Swami appointed Interim General Secretary. Fugitive businessman Vijay Malia sentenced to four months in jail in contempt case, faces charges of defrauding banks of 9,000 crore rupees. Rain situation worsens in Telangana, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. Flood-like situation in many parts of Gujarat. Prime Minister assures all help to the states. And that's all we have in this today's news. For more updates, keep watching Sansa TV. Thank you for watching. Good night. Namaskar.